First day of school! Wake up! Wake up! Come on! First day of school! Finding Nemo is the perfect YouTube video. It delivers in a title and thumbnail, Finding Nemo, he finds Nemo. The protagonist is a charismatic personality and it has great stakes and spectacle. It literally hits the same storytelling beats that we try to hit on YouTube. However, how would you feel of it instead of starting like this? I promise I will never let anything happen to you. The motivation began like this. Hey guys, today I'm going to be traveling across the entire ocean to find my kidnapped son! It's a bit jarring, isn't it? But that's kind of what we have to do on YouTube today. It gives the audience a great affirmation that we won't waste your time because we get started straight away. This is half a million dollars in cash and whichever one of them I tagged last keeps it. Spectacle is all over YouTube. It's what drives our titles and our thumbnails. However, for me, the problem is, what is the context and reason for this spectacle? To put it simply, what's the why? The problem is, we as YouTubers feel like we have to give our audiences four. We don't want them to click off on the video and so we can get that high retention. But wait, uh, hold on. What's a four? The writer and director of Finding Nemo, Andrew Stanton, has that answer. The audience actually wants to work for their meal. They just don't want to know that they're doing that. We would call this the unifying theory of two plus two. Make the audience put things together. Don't give them four, give them two plus two. I don't think we particularly do two plus two. We do four. We present ourselves in a very literal sense and give our information as bluntly as possible. Hey guys, today I'm going to be traveling across the entire ocean to find my kidnapped son. The paradox is, on YouTube, we think with retention in mind that audiences are not hungry, that they don't want to work for their meal. They want four. But what if audiences actually want two plus two? But we as creators have decided that four is easier to tell. Hey guys, today I'm going to be traveling across the entire- If you're a YouTuber, you're a storyteller. And I think you want to be able to tell two plus two. So how do we do that? Frankly, there isn't anyone you couldn't learn to love once you've heard their story. Probably the most greatest story commandment, which is make me care. Please, emotionally, intellectually, aesthetically, just make me care. You could optimize your content for that maximized retention, but if you don't make me care about you, your friends, or your adventure, I'm not going to be satisfied with your video. Comparing how Finding Nemo opens a story to how we open our content, I think we can all agree that we prefer Finding Nemo's opening. It suggests to us why we should care. Which now makes me curious, what does Finding Nemo do right that we as YouTubers could learn from? How does Finding Nemo introduce its characters and motivate its story to make us care? The movie opens with a beautiful image of the ocean. It's fast, open, and it promises possibility. And it gives us one word. Wow. The main character, Marlin, says exactly what we're thinking. This immediately makes him relatable and signals to us who we, as an audience, should latch onto. A fish can breathe out here. We're witnessing a brand new start for Marlin and his fishwife, Coral. They're looking at a new world filled with optimism, eagerness, and promise. That world is reinforced by the magnificent colors of this safe and comfortable world. With that, we witness what I think is the most valuable line in this entire opening sequence. So you do like it, don't you? No, 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 I do, I do, I do, I really do like it. This little moment of dialogue shows a character trait. Marlon is eager to please. The slightly panicked but reassuring response from Coral expresses that this small moment of insecurity is a common conversation. What if they don't like me? Marlon. This very subtly, but very powerfully, manifests a character flaw of Marlin becoming an overprotective father. Marlin's journey, the story, and our reason to care is as already as deep as where the Titanic lays. But that's not enough. We need to go as deep as the Mariana Trench. Marlin and Coral are going to be parents, ingraining their entire identity on their responsibilities. We're gonna be parents. This gives the story the ultimate cheat code to make you care. In a story, it's important to show what you have. So we feel the terror of what happens. Cuties here. 
if you lose it. Where did everybody go? And since this is a story, <gasps> you already know that they will. No! With this simple cut to black, we know everything is lost. Coral! His insecurity has been answered. He's become a failed husband and parent. And this loss... Coral? ...makes us care. And even more so when what is left of his identity has to survive. There, there, there. It's okay, Daddy's here. This becomes his why. He needs validation as a father, and that threat of survival to protect what's left is a primal emotion for audiences. I promise I will never let anything happen to you. We're now buckled into a great film because Pixar has shown the hallmarks of a great story. The surface level story is about protecting Nemo. The actual story is exposing Marlin's insecurity of trying to be a good dad. You'll never get out of there yourself. I'll do it. Which is actually making him a bad dad. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo. I hate you. The story has shown three important traits. A character's want, a character's need, and a character's flaw. And all of this gives context and reason to the spectacle. The spectacle story is the road trip across the ocean with a cast of unlikely characters. But the spectacle serves the story, the emotion, the reason why we should care. Ah, I'm coming, Nemo! When the catalyst of the spectacle arrives, Daddy! when Marlin's last and only child is put into danger, no! we're gripped to our seats seeing how he will adapt. And for the spectacle to serve the story in Marlin learning to become a supportive, trusting, and caring dad. I can do this! He has to literally let go of his insecurities. You're right. I know you can. The growth is incredible, but we wouldn't see that if the content only gave us a four and didn't make us care. Because Pixar knows that spectacle without a why or reason to care is hollow. This is where I believe we as YouTubers and young storytellers can improve. We jump right into spectacle with not enough character building. So if Pixar and Andrew Stanton were to be on pre-production of a grand spectacle YouTube video, these would be the questions they would ask and questions you should ask too. For you and your story, know your want, know your need, and know your flaw. And ask what story or journey could that create? And with your spectacle idea, ask these questions. What do I want? What happens if I don't get what I want? And what will I do to get what I want? And if you can have those questions and use a spectacle to answer those questions, you will make your audience care. And the true value of a good story is that those who experience it are compelled to share it. When he was out there, these divers appeared and I tried to stop them. And then Nemo's dad swims out to the ocean. He scares away the sharks by blowing them up. Searching the ocean for days on the East Australian current. Sure, I'd be mates. It's one dedicated fighter, if you ask me.